This episode of The Reasons I'm Broke is brought to you by Audible. Sign up today and get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. There's over 150,000 titles to choose from, all available on your Android device, Kindle, and iPhone. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Reasons I'm Broke podcast number 129, where we bring you the reasons we're broke, ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more. I'm Kelly. And I'm Daniel. And for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome to the best show you will ever hear, better than Constantine on the TVs and all of Chef Ramsay. That's not true. (laughs) (laughs) But we can dream. The way we format our show is first we start out with some news, again ranging from comics, movies, TV, video games, and more, and we follow up with our comic book pull list of the week. We do have tons of news this week. Yes. Huge on the comic book front because both DC and Marvel decided to pretty much show their hand when it comes to what they're doing in Secret Wars and then post-Convergence, which is DC's big event. So we're going to go ahead and start with DC, which is, again, that their new direction of comics, which is coming in June. We talked about it before. I talk about it with subscribers all the time at the shop. 26 titles are still going, Mm -hmm. but then they're going to get 24 brand new titles. So it won't be 52 anymore. It'll be 50 titles. And the 24 brand new titles, in case you missed it, they're going to be more inclusive titles with more LGBT characters, minority characters, digital drawings. That way it appeals to the younger crowd. But then they're keeping their older readers, the stuff that people that like the new 52, with the strong titles, which are those 26. Stuff like Batman, Action Comics, Sinestro, Grace, and that kind of thing. So co-publisher Jim Lee said, We're updating the line, but selectively. So rather than having 52 books all in the same continuity and keeping a universe that's tightly connected with super internal consistency and one flavor, we've broken it up. We'll have a core line of about 25 books that will have that internal consistency and will consist of our best-selling books. But then the rest of our line of about 24 titles will be allowed to shake things up a bit. And some of those 24 titles are actually miniseries, so we do know that stuff like Bizarro is not going to be an ongoing series. Instead, it's DC kind of throwing stuff up on the wall and seeing what sticks. If something is really big, they'll obviously convert it over to an ongoing, kind of like Marvel did with Darth Vader. It's like those sticky hands you got from the vending machines. Except they're, yeah, they'd be DC-themed, though. Yes. Plastic Man? Yes, there you <laughs> Those go. Those need to be quarter machines, though they're not really quarter machines anymore. Now they're dollar machines, except mm. four quarters. <laughs> We'd carry those in the shop. I don't care. Like, yeah, plastic man hands all day. (laughs) So in addition to this, DC will give readers eight-page stories for all 49 of June's books in their May titles. They'll also be available for free through DCComics.com and Comixology. They say 49, but they're kind of playing around with the numbers. They're playing more with the 50 number, right around that range. Mm -hmm. That's a really, really smart idea, too, giving people a preview of it so they don't have to commit if they know they're not going to like it. We've seen them do this before with stuff like Doomed, Superman Mm -hmm. Doomed. You see like a two-page spread, like, hey, this is what this story is about. If you want to jump on it, it's going to be on Superman or whatever. And they're going to be doing that with the books in May. That way they can catch readers, hopefully, the Convergence crowd, and try to get them to try out these new books that are coming in June. Jim Lee also said, we're really asking the creators to put story and character first. And really, focus is on canon rather than continuity. It seems like a lot of the readers hold continuity so high, Mm -hmm. and I never quite understood that. I see it all the time with people asking me questions. Uh, They'll get confused, like, how is Damien Robin right now when Batman's only been operating for X amount of years, yet Dick Grayson and Tim Drake are already Nightwing and Robin, so all those things happened. With the New 52, a lot of the timeline got crunched up, and people were confused about it. And they do get hung up on it. They actually do care about whether or not something matches or makes sense. And I I don't don't know. Maybe I'm just the kind of person that just reads the book and enjoys it for what it is. But to others, it's that that mythology Mm -hmm. that they want it to be accurate. Because maybe to them, it is as real as, you know, any other story that you might like. Right. I I don't know. I do think it's more about the story, though. Like, who cares? (laughs) (laughs) Just enjoy it for what it is. By putting the story and characters first, that's where the creativity is going to come, and that's where that breath of fresh air that readers are asking for, that's where that's going to come. And that's what both publishers are going to be doing this Mm -hmm. summer. 
Dan DiDio elaborated on what Jimmy was saying by saying that the cross-pollination is built on the recent successes by DC Comics. He went on to say, You see a book like Black Canary coming out, which expands out of Batgirl. There was a sensibility in, Bla in Batgirl that people got excited about, so we expanded that there. Same thing when we see the success of Harley Quinn, we bring the same team over to Starfire. We want to build on success and build onward. I can't wait for Starfire, man. They mentioned it here. I'm so excited. We were actually talking about that in the car this afternoon. Yeah, that's one of the titles I'm most excited for. Bizarro is the other. Mm -hmm. We Are Robin by Lee Bermejo. And then, of course, Robin, Son of Batman, all done up by Pat Gleason. That's an early example of DC working with what is working, mm -hmm. with what is selling for them. Harley Quinn is such a hot seller. I think the last time we saw the top 10 for last month, it was just Batman and Harley Quinn in those top 10s. No other Amazing. DC book. <laughs> well, what other DC book is there? Well, there's Detective Comics, which Meh. also has Batman in it. There's Batman Eternal, which Meh. also has Batman in it. <laughs> Batman and Superman, which also has Batman Meh. in it. Just Batman. Batman and Harley. That's all we need. That's all we need. That's all they're going to live off of. Yes. <laughs> We did also get some more news on Batman Beyond. This will be written by Dan Jurgens with art by Bernard Chang. This will take place 35 years in the future after the events from Future's End and Convergence. So we got some answers right there. I thought that Tim Drake was actually going to become Batman Beyond, which may still happen, but I thought he was going to be stuck in the current continuity and fight alongside the Justice League and Batman, the current Boring. ones. Boring. I think that'd be awesome. Like, you have a future tech superhero. Boring running around with the superheroes of today boring and then he can go off in the future later no, on it's got to be all in the future well it looks like that's what you're getting mm -hmm. the solicitation for this is at last batman beyond gets his own ongoing series in the definite future of the dcu but this isn't the beyond that you think you know with the justice league missing and without bruce to guide him this new batman will need to explore this bizarre world on his own while fighting to raise humanity from an opponent that's already won <sighs> this sounds so badass i think that helps a lot of readers connect with the character of batman beyond because this is a character that's lost in the future and then these are readers that are starting off with this new batman but this does bring up the questions no terry mcginnis and then also, will Tim Drake travel to the future as the new Batman Beyond? Some of the covers for Future's End show someone holding Batman Beyond's body. I haven't been reading Future's End. We dropped out at like issue 11. Mm -hmm. We really didn't like it. But we did like issue 0 and issue 1. And they did say, Dan Jurgen says he wants to build on that beginning. So that gets me a little bit excited. Like, I'll give it a, it's three issues or whatever just right. to see. But so far, if it's anything like Future's End, we probably won't enjoy it. But we'll give it a shot, of course. Mm -hmm, but without Terry McGinnis, is that a problem? <sighs> Who do you like more, Tim Drake or Terry McGinnis? You can't ask me these questions because I like them both for different reasons. Would you say that's not Batman Beyond because it's Terry or it's Tim Drake? No, I wouldn't. But they did say that Batman's not going to be there to guide them. So I don't think Terry is a good option because Terry isn't Terry without old man Bruce. True. So I definitely do think it needs to be someone, as much as I love Terry, the best parts of Terry are when he's with old man Bruce. Yeah. At least we know we'll probably have that android Alfred in his helmet, like, talking yeah. to him. That personality. Yeah. That can be Tim Drake's old man Bruce. It'll be old man Alfred. Old android Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> Good for old android Alfred. More on the June solicitations. Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok will stay on as the creative team on Justice League. Free comic book day in May. We'll have a preview of The Dark Side War, which will be the Justice League arc starting in June. Summary for this reads, when the Justice League investigates a series of unexplained murders on Earth, it leads them to the front lines of a war unlike any the DC Universe has ever seen, a battle between the two most powerful villains in existence, Darkseid and the Anti-Monitor. Meet Darkseid's daughter, a mysterious force of evil with a bizarre connection to the Justice League. Can the Anti-Monitor be Aya from Green Lantern, the animated series? And then Darkseid's daughter could be with Aya who is the anti-monitor in Green Lantern the yes! series. Yes! But then Razor has to be in there. I'm sorry, Space Zuko. 
Well, he has to win back Aya yeah, from Dark Side with a kiss. If he had just kissed her from the beginning, none of this would have happened. I don't think that would have fixed I it. I think it definitely would have fixed it. I remember that series was going on, and you kept telling him like, "Kiss her, just kiss her." Yeah. But then he kept changing his mind, like, "Never mind, I don't love you." Well, he was such he was so Zuko. I mean, that's just what Zuko does. Space Zuko. Space Zuko. <laughs> space Zuko. <laughs> <laughs> like space ghost. But no, you you gentlemen underestimate the powers of kisses and fixing things for women. <laughs> Like, that's all we need. When we're angry, just kiss us. <laughs> and everything's fixed. Everything's <laughs> fixed. But just, like, make sure you know her first. <laughs> <laughs> so Darkseid's daughter, it sounds like it's going to be a brand new character. Mm-hmm. How, who, who's Darkseid finding to sleep with? I'm just curious. Whoever he wants. Like, he just owns this planet, and whoever he fancies, whatever he sees that gets him fucking turns him on or gets batman. him hard like that. Is Bat- it's, gonna it's be. just batman and we know he's not sleeping with him what happened with batman twice where he was so yeah. impressed by batman but that's not happening so it's going to be someone else i'm sure we'll figure it out when this justice league arc comes about hopefully i want to see who loves dark side there needs to be a woman who loves dark side wants to fix him can dark side be fixed or loved at all no i mean somebody can love him sure but is dark side ever going to be like unless it was batman Dark side would never be like, okay, I love you too. Like, Nor would I want him to, because no, that's not Dark side. Exactly. So in Batman number forty-one, we will get the reveal of an all-new, all-armored Batman. This is the biggest news from everything that DC yes. has revealed. This is what Scott Snyder has been talking about for the last couple of months when he when he said there's going to be a new status quo to Batman. Mm-hmm. Solicitation on this is the all-new Batman makes his debut. Who is he, and what happens next? Find out here as a new era begins in Gotham City. Interesting. So of the New Direction, writer Scott Snyder had this to say. There's going to be all new villains. I want to go back to the spirit we had when we were creating Court of Owls, where there's new villains, new threats, new cast. If you have not seen the new Batman, he is all armored, he's blue and black, and he's got like these... Uh, bunny ears <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's what it looks like and then what it looks like some police lights on mm-hmm. the back and the front so this could be someone from the member of the gcpd it could be that cop guy that batman was talking with and then he was disappointed in him but he still liked him could be him and this batman does wield a gun so that that tells me that this officer is you know willing to kill right. in gotham and supposedly he's teaming up, this new Batman's teaming up with another character. So there's going to be two of them that are going to help this new Batman work What if it's Gotham. Harvey Bullock? That'd be so cool. That'd be so exciting. That would be amazing. <laughs> Wait, but how do we know he uses real bullets? It could be rubber bullets. Could be rubber bullets. I don't know. I I'm, think... I'm really thinking like a rubber bullet to the junk and somebody's done. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all you need. Well, that's all Batman needs to really defeat anyone. Just a punch to the junk, right? Well, Yeah. <laughs> 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 very mixed reactions scott snyder did say that people were going to probably be upset mm-hmm. at him but he did say that he did this because he doesn't want the story to just be like an elseworld story or something like kingdom come where it doesn't actually take place in the regular continuity but dc told him like well why don't you write that story that you want like the kingdom comes which eventually we sort of worked into continuity except this will actually start off in the main line right so why don't you do that we trust you and that's actually what we asked of all our creators with everything that's happening in june don't wait for these new number ones and let them be the fresh air that you know the readers are going to get this this starting point instead why don't you challenge yourself and with the characters and see what you can do and that's what scott snyder and greg capullo i feel are going to put forth whatever the idea is i i mean they've proven time and time again Correct. every month Absolutely. for years that they can do a good fucking story they can do some great art some colorists by fco that same team is on this it's gonna be fine so everyone calm down <laughs> Superman and Wonder Woman also got brand new looks in Mm -hmm. June. Wonder Woman, the return of the pants, it looks like. Some more armor, including uh, like a knife that comes out of her wrist. Hmm. Very similar to Mass Effect when you do that melee attack. Ass Effect? Not Ass Effect. Yes, Ass Effect. And Superman, (laughs) he lost his cape, put on some jeans, (laughs) a tight shirt, and got a haircut. He looks a lot like Superboy. Like from Young Justice. Mm -hmm. Pretty much just an older version of him. But yeah. he's, he's clearly still just trying to get with Batman. 
I mean, clearly. That, that explains the loss of the spit curl? Yeah. He just... What's he upset like, about? He's he's trying real hard to pretend he's not attracted to Batman, but then, like, Batman walks in the room and he flexes in that tight shirt a little bit. <laughs> he's got on his Lee jeans that accentuate his buns, I'm sure. <laughs> That's why he removed the cape? Yeah, so that, like, Batman could see all he had to offer. <laughs> it's not going to work, Superman. It's, it has never worked. Let him try. He's going to try for the rest of his life. Because Superman loves Batman. Exactly. Did you not see The Dark Knight? Oh, I saw The Dark Knight. Yeah, when he's like, no, his heart. Dark Knight returns. Yep. Don't touch him. <laughs> <laughs> Hope we see that recreated in Batman v Superman. That'd be amazing. <laughs> now let's move forward with Marvel, the popular one right now with the movies and the comics. Alongside the rest of the Secret Wars comics, Marvel has announced Giant Size, Little Marvel, AVX by Scotty Young. Oh, Scotty Young. I love his art. His art is great, but I feel like his covers... Like, he's gotten so much work that he's just not putting forth his best effort. Because he doesn't need to. He's still making that money, money, money. <laughs> like, I'll see some of the Scotty Young variants. I'm like, these aren't as good as they used to be. Like, you go in the back issues and you see Ozma of Oz or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's like, holy shit, his this stuff His Oz run great. was amazing. Yeah, but it looks like with this one, we did like the little Marvel thing that they did from mm -hmm. AVX. It was two years ago, I think. Uh, I think so. And this is going to be a bigger series. A little one shot, I think. We actually don't know because there's no word from Marvel on how long this series is going to be. But this will be kid-friendly and will fit into the Secret Wars event coming this summer. We'll be picking it up. Mm -hmm, of course. So keeping up with some Marvel news, we also have some convention news as well. We're getting into the time of year where Dan and I start going to all these conventions and there's conventions everywhere and we run out of money. It's like every, every city has its own. <laughs> exactly. So while answering fan questions, director James Gunn from Guardian of the Galaxy revealed that Marvel will not be in attendance at San Diego Comic-Con this year. That's a shocker. Mm -hmm. I could not believe that when I read it on Twitter. Disney has not responded to this at all, but fans are speculating that Marvel will do its reveals at WonderCon in April, the D23 Expo in August, or October's New York Comic Con instead. Another factor could be that Disney won't want their Marvel events to conflict with their Star Wars footage at San Diego. Bad move or a good move? <sighs> um, it's probably a good move because they're really trying to push the Star Wars thing and I feel there's more people who are against Star Wars than people who are f against Marvel. I completely disagree with you. Really? I think they absolutely need to have a presence at San Diego Comic-Con. That is the one convention that people look to when they want to see the latest footage or the latest character reveal or the latest cast to their new Marvel lineup, whatever that is. And I don't feel like that conflicts with Star Wars at all. It's a completely different audience. Some of us may watch both of those things, but people that... Just because you have your Star Wars fan base, it doesn't mean that that's the exact same fan base that is just there for the Marvel movies. And you could, They could do both, and they would be fine. I don't know why they actually chose you not know, to be there. Disney's got a lot going on right now. Here I am defending them again. <laughs> but Disney's got a lot going on. Like, my Facebook's been blowing up with all this Disney stuff. Yeah, but none of that. You think they're so big that I'm yeah. sure they have a whole division dedicated to just handling the San Diego Comic-Con stuff. It's just going to be Warner Brothers probably showing our first clip of Batman v Superman, awesome. if anything, a teaser trailer. Awesome. And I guess they're just going to let them have that. That's fine. Let them have it. Let DC have their thing. Disney can go focus on their thing later. Something I've been reading on the internet, too, is a lot of commenters are saying that maybe they don't have any footage ready. It's like, no, they have they something. They definitely have something ready. Of course, there's some stuff finished. If anything, they can promote Ant-Man. They can talk more about Avengers 2 by that time. They can talk about Frozen. <laughs> not that it's Marvel. That. <laughs> Frozen 2 or Toy Story 4. <laughs> no, that should not happen. Toy Story 4? They no. can make it good. Toy Story 3 was was a perfect bookend. It ending. was. It was. But money, money, money. I guess so. <laughs> do you think that Marvel will instead hold their own event just for their reveals? Do you think they'll do it all through online? Or do you think it'll be at one of those conventions like the D23 Expo? Um, I could definitely, definitely see it at the D23 Expo, particularly if they're, one, trying to get more people to purchase into the D23, or... Um, I mean, it depends on how much Disney wants to be associated with the Marvel name. And right now, it feels like they should be because Marvel is just making so much money at yeah. the box office and the comics. 
the percentages are getting higher and higher for that market share for both Marvel and the independent books. Well, and it's fantastic for Marvel to be associated with Disney because, like, when we went on the cruise, it was all Marvel everywhere, you know, for the kids, and, of course, that's driving up their sales. So speaking of conventions, we actually held an in-store convention kickoff at my comic book shop, and this was one of many shops that actually participated in this event. Basically what this was is a bunch of the creators like Brian Michael Bendis, Cullen Bunn, they streamed interviews on the televisions of mm -hmm. every comic shop around. They also streamed it online as well. And you had different sponsorships and you could actually tweet the creator's questions. Dandy Dio himself was there representing DC. That's awesome. So you had DC, Marvel, uh, the Independent Image, Boom, like they had a bunch of creators on there. And for the first year it was actually a little bit rocky. And we totally expected that right. because it never goes smoothly the first year. But we got what we wanted. We got to tweet questions to the creators and then they actually answered them. One of which I did ask Dan DiDio. Like I went on break and, and watched the stream during the DC thing, mm -hmm. of course, because I wanted to see what he had to say. And he was mainly pushing convergence. Like conver convergence was the thing that he was like, look, guys, this is going to be a big event. You guys should all invest into this. Uh, he gave us a little bit of info about how each book is going to have a one-page summary catching every reader up. Like, this okay. is what happened with these characters. If you are not familiar with the new... If you're only familiar with New 52, here's a little history on these characters that you may not have read about. That's awesome. And now here's where the story begins. I feel like they should do that a lot more with their regular books. Mm -hmm. But it looks like with Convergence, at least it'll help someone like us who maybe aren't familiar with, uh, I don't know, something <laughs> a little more obscure out there like right. the Doom Patrol. I did want to get Dan DiDio more to talk about the June titles, so I did submit a question to him and he didn't answer it. And mine was at one point that did DC actually feel that they should be more inclusive with their June titles? And he immediately, like when he asked the question, like Dan DiDio, Dan DiDio got really defensive. <laughs> He's like, well, we've always been inclusive. That's always something that we, we've tried to do and that's something we tell our creators to do. We go out and we get the newest talent, the up and coming. So we've always had that. So I, I don't know, when, <laughs> and the, the moderator was like, yeah, it's kind of a loaded question. It's like, just admit that at one point, your June lineup, you said, here's these 24 titles. Like, I'm not saying you were not inclusive at all. That's not the case right. at all. I'm just saying, at what point did you go, okay, let's let's ramp this up a little bit more. That's all I was asking, mm -hmm. but I, I guess he, I don't know, he wanted to get defensive about it. It was kind of funny, but I'm, I'm really glad he answered it regardless. That's awesome. And highlighting a local convention, we've got the Road to Megacon here in Central Florida. Our guest highlight of the week is Frank Cho. Known for his series Liberty Meadows, as well as books such as Shauna the She-Devil, Mighty Avengers, and Jungle Girl, Frank is known for his figure drawing and precise lines. Megacon will be from April 10th through the 12th at the Orange County Convention Center. You can get your tickets at megaconvention.com. Also, another convention that we have coming up, May 22nd through the 24th at the Rose and Crown Hotel in Orlando, Florida, Omni Expo. We'll have our very own panel on that Saturday. It'll be called Nerd Up Media Podcasting 101. We'll have more information on that as Megacon comes and passes. But wanted to remind everyone out there, May 22nd through the 24th, Friends of Nerd Up Media, that's Omni Expo. And before we jump into our comics, we want to give you our free Audible audiobook recommendation of the week. This one is The Secret History of Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, created in 1941, is the most popular female superhero of all time. Aside from Superman and Batman, no superhero has lasted as long or commanded so wildly passionate a following. Like every other superhero, Wonder Woman has a secret identity. Unlike every other superhero, she also has a secret history. This audiobook is free with your trial when you sign up at audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. Brokettes get a free audiobook download of their choice along with a free 30-day trial. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash nerdupmedia. This was a bit of an odd week for us in terms of comics because we only had one DC book mm -hmm. this week. Most of it was Marvel and Kaboom. Our first book is a Kaboom comic. This is Adventure Time, Marceline Gone Adrift, number three. It's written by Meredith Gran with art by Carrie Peach. There was one book, there's a couple of books here that were very much, I wasn't impressed with, and this was actually one of them. Mm -hmm. The last issue we had, I felt like that was going to be the setup to it, and instead this was the one. And I, I don't know, I feel like it didn't really progress much at all. Like Finn just continues if anything it was at the end of the book where we had bubblegum actually move the action forward everything before that 
I don't know. I didn't feel like it contributed emotionally to anything. The secondary characters trying to make money on the side, I feel like it's just a subplot. I wasn't too impressed with it. I agree 100% with everything that you said. It's a super filler. It's just, this is what they're doing right now, and this is what they're doing right now, and this is happening over here. Like you said, it didn't advance anything at all. I still enjoyed the book. We get to see Marceline wake up and her feelings on what happened and remember what Bubblegum did, did in previous issues. And so I think when she's reunited with Bubblegum, like, that's all going to come full circle. And so I'm waiting for that. But this book itself, I don't feel really contributed to anything. Another Boom comic that we have is Bravest Warriors number 30, written by Kate Leth and Pranas Naujukaitis, with art by Pranas Naujukaitis and Ian McGinty, and colors by Lisa Moore. This one holds a very special part in my heart, because all the Bravest Warriors go to summer camp. And that was something you did growing up. It was, it was, and they're talking about the smell of summer camp, and I remember the smell of summer camp, and, and just that feeling that you get when you go, and you're so excited, and I was excited, and I want to go to summer camp. Can I go to summer camp? You can go to summer camp. No, I have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I never went to summer camp, so I actually didn't relate too much to this book. I did enjoy that we do have the return of the evil cat bug. Yes. And I feel like that should be the main conflict in the next book when whenever that ends up settling and concluding. But otherwise, the interaction with the rest of the kids, like they clearly don't know how to make kids feel better. And sometimes <laughs> they'll see, say some horrible shit. <laughs> and that's where the comedy comes through. That line was great. Our parents just left us here. Do you think my parents left us here? Left me here? <laughs> that was my favorite part. <laughs> Overall, I still feel like this book was a lot of fun. It is a setup for the evil cat bug conflict that we're going to get. But because I went to summer camp, I related a lot. And I miss the smell of summer camp. And cat bug was adorable in his little t-shirt. How does he even get his t-shirt on over like his wings? Who's more adorable, cat bug or puppy cat? Oh, puppy with cat. With their outfits. Puppy cat. Puppy cat, all right. Yeah, because he gets his little too cute to poot. <laughs> <laughs> and his leather jacket that he wanted so much. Yes, but he bought like brass knuckles instead. Our next book is Hexed number eight. This is written by Michael Allen Nelson with art by Dan Mora and the colorist is Gabriel Casada. This is the book. This is what, what happens when you push a character, our main character, to the very edge. This is where you explore as a reader what the people that you have been playing with, all the characters and the villains, how insignificant some of them can be when your hero actually gets upset to the point where they will do whatever it takes to get at the villain and to get justice. This was amazing. I absolutely loved this issue. So much cray cray shit went down. And then the ending was just like, wow. A lot of murdering. Art still looks great. Mm -hmm. This picked up the series from before, which we had a number oh, seven, yes. which still had an amazing ending. But you do see that some of those, whatever happened in Hex before this is actually true. It's not like a comic book magic trick where you find out, oh, this character is actually okay. No, th this is what happened. And now you're going to see mm -hmm. what happens when you fuck with a powerful person that is a good person, but quickly turns around when you personally harm them. Well, and I think that this is... A very true depiction of what would happen with people. I could see any person anywhere where if you went after somebody they loved, they they would respond in the same way. If I mean, have we seen Taken? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Teen Dog number seven. There's one more issue left after this. Story and art by Jake Lawrence. Teen Dog goes to prom. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. <laughs> We've said it before, we like that the series has an uh, overall story, even though it is made up of little strips. Mm -hmm. Like, they do all connect together in the comic book, and it does end with the final page. I think there's only been one or two books that have had a cliffhanger, but everything is concluded in this one as well. Even, like, one of the gags near the beginning of the book, when you get to the very end, like, yeah. you're like oh, shit, there, there's that again. There it is. <laughs> So it's done wonderfully, and I'm mm -hmm. still always hoping that this becomes an ongoing. It, it probably won't, I've got to be honest with you. The sales haven't been there, but we've loved the book for what it is. And, you know, hopefully some of you check it out if you find it out at your comic shop or when it eventually comes out on trade. Mm -hmm. I love their prom theme, too. Under the sea and the stars, because <laughs> they couldn't decide. <laughs> so just pick the two most commonly used ones, I guess. One of them in Back to the Future, if I remember correctly. 
Under the really? Sea. Yep. That's awesome. Plus, they also do a lot of like Midnight in Paris. No, what is it? There's another one. Midsummer Night's Dream. That's what they do a lot too. <laughs> That's not what I had. <laughs> oh, proms. What was yours? I don't even remember what my theme was. I remember we had like the Oscars. So they had a red carpet and they took all our pictures when we walked in. That's kind of cool. It was pretty cool. Like a movie theme? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. Then there was another one. I don't remember what it was. And here we have the debut of a new book as we move into our Marvel comics. Yes, Howard the Duck number one. This is written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Joe Quinones and the colorist is Rico Rinzi. We know Chip, of course, from Sex Criminals, which we absolutely love. And it actually connects with She-Hulk, which actually ended last month, another mm -hmm. series we were liking. I really enjoyed this book. I didn't think that I would. Yeah, we didn't read... We haven't read any Howard the Duck, mm -hmm. actually. I Ever. know those books are out there, but it's just nothing nothing that really caught my attention. And maybe it's because of the movie that it's like, oh, that's kind of a weird character. But this is actually a fun book, and that's why we gave it a shot, because it is Chip Zdarsky. Uh, I've realized that as the years have gone by, I more follow the authors and the artists more than the characters, unless right. it's Batman. <laughs> and in this case, you know, it pays off because we we got this great story from a, from a character that we initially didn't care much about, and now it's like, okay, well, this is working, and it's funny, and the setup is good, and it connects to She-Hulk, which we liked. Mm -hmm. The art is nice. It matches that She-Hulk. It's just, it's overall, it's a very fun book, and we probably sold out at my comic shop. We were down to like three copies on oh, wow. New Comic Book Day, so it's, it's definitely one that's going to go to second printing. It's definitely a lot of fun. Howard is such a badass. He's just cussing all over the place, and I'm like, well, good for you, Howard. And I love, they kind of break the fourth wall a little bit. They have that one line where the guy's like, yeah, I saw you in the movie. I'm like, I saw him in the movie too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do a little bit of that, including naming Black Hat Catwoman. I thought that mm -hmm. was hilarious. Just yeah. a little hyphen so that they don't get sued. <laughs> I mean, there, there was a lot in there though, and I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but there were a lot where I was like, yeah, I know about that. Um, oh, She-Hulk sings Taylor Swift. That's true. Yep. If you liked She-Hulk, if you like Chip Zdarsky, Sex Criminals, this is one you should be picking up. Mm -hmm. That's Howard the Duck number one. We've got a Spider-Man book this week, Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man number 11, written by Brian Michael Bendis, art by David Marquez, and colors by Justin Ponsor. I feel for the most part this is a filler. Yes, but we actually got the payoff with Miles' girlfriend. Like we, we saw how she feels about the whole situation, and the ending to it... I didn't, I was like, what? That's kind of confusing to me. Right. But all of that, all these relationships and how they're falling apart, at least his main one, his love interest, that's where there's going to have to be some healing between the characters. And I think it's concluded next month because it's right before Secret Wars. Okay. So I want to see how Hydra comes to terms with Miles or breaks some kind of deal with him so that they stop messing with one another or end up fighting and destroying. You know, maybe he disbands the organization. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But that's, I felt like this raised a lot of questions to me and I think that's going to make number 12 that much better. Mm, I agree. I think this girl was dumb though. His girlfriend, she was a dumbass. She should have just kept her mouth closed. Just bl blabbing to everyone about who Spider-Man is. Yeah. Yeah. Dummy. So, we gave you guys our opinions on this book. We want to hear your opinion. First Broquette, who goes to marvel.com slash redeem and types in this code, you'll get a free copy of this issue. The code is N-T-M-2-Q-N-B-Z-R-Z-K-U. And after you read it, hit us up on Twitter at Reasons I'm Broke and let us know what you thought. And you can tell me that she was a dummy because I know she was a dummy. You know it. <laughs> I know it. You should know it too. You know what else I know? I know that your pick of the week is next, Stop! and that is Silver Surfer no! number 10. You always pretend like you know me. One day you're not going to know me, and then what, sir? Yes, my pick of the week is Silver Surfer number 10. This is written by Dan Slott with art by Michael Allred, and the colorist is Laura Allred. That's okay, because it's my pick of the week as well. <laughs> I picked the best book. It was so good. You picked it too. This is what happens when Silver Surfer once again betray or not betrays, but stands up to Galactus. I feel like it's different this time. Like, yes, he has the weight of his on his shoulders of all these people, millions of civilizations that he's helped destroy, and we saw how. Dawn resented him for that and didn't trust him after he told her the news or whatever. 
But now that there's actual danger in which all of them may cease to exist because Galactus, there's really no way to stop him. When her life comes in danger, you see what Silver Surfer is really capable of. Yeah, it was so good. Silver Surfer's such a badass, and Dawn's still a dummy, but whatevs. And then he says that thing, and then I went, <gasps> It's a love story, yep. <sighs> I was so happy, and I said, Silver Surfer, I wish you'd say those things to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, I think we're going to get something really big with their relationship soon. Um, not to spoil too much, but he's taking her home. Right. They've, they've reached a point in his journey where he's like, nah, you're going home now. And she's agreed. Um, so we're... Uh, uh, man, there's going to be tears soon. I can't do this. It seems like it might be too much for both of them. Yes. For her for getting into danger, him for putting her in danger. It's more of an internal guilt for the Silver Surfer. And I think that's that's what Dan Slott's been exploring. And that's what's made this book so successful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It definitely like you said both of our picks of the week it was a wonderful book this series has been solid the whole time and i think it's only going to get better from here next marvel book is spider gwen number two written by jason latour art by javier rodriguez and colorist is rico renzi i'm really enjoying this series i feel not a lot really happened in this book but it was a lot of fun and i'm really excited for what's coming next month I was very much reminded of Batgirl. Like, I got that same mm-hmm. kind of feeling when I read this. Agreed. And this was a much better issue than issue number one. You get to see the this universe's version of the Punisher, this version of the Vulture, and then, of course, uh, Spider-Ham. You see Daredevil. I mean, there's so many characters introduced here mm-hmm. that were... I mean, we know of their regular version, but not the Spider-Gwen universe and what's going on with them. So you see how some of them are twisted, especially when it comes to the Daredevil. And I think that's, for any Marvel fan that loves those characters, I think they'd have a lot to go through if they read this book. Mm -hmm. And if you like something like Batgirl, like we have, I think uh, that there's something for that fan base as well. Our next Marvel book is Thor number six. This is written by Jason Aaron, with art by Russell Dodderman, and the colorist is Matthew Wilson. We all want to know who the new Thor is, and no one more than the Odin son himself, who's actually made a list of all the possible candidates for Thor. And he eliminates about three names from that list just on this issue alone. Mm -hmm. I think the time is coming where we will soon find out who she is. Either way, she's still a badass. You still have that... Oh, can I tell you, though, like, the first three pages of this issue, like, blew me away. Yeah, we do get the backstory to one of the villains that we saw established in a previous issue. I think it sort of showed how evil he was, but also what drove him to get to this place. I really don't blame him. I'm just saying. Right. Me neither. (laughs) Like, zero percent of me blames him. I don't think I would have gone that far, but now that I'd be like, yeah, good for you, kid. (laughs) (laughs) This is an issue of more for the Odin Sons or the old Thor's journey into figuring out why he is not worthy anymore of the hammer and what makes this new Thor worthy of the Mm -hmm. new you know being thor so if you did like the original thor i I feel like you're going to go on a journey with him if you stay on this on this series because it's not just about the new thor it is about the original one as well and we also we got really close to figuring out what it was that nick fury whispered to thor that made him unworthy we almost got i wanted to be something like real silly batman is better than you (laughs) and then he drops the hammer boom (laughs) we also get to see mama thor being a badass yeah, who we actually wanted, to we be, wanted her character to yeah. be the new Thor, but that it didn't work awesome. out. But we still get some good moments with her mm-hmm. as well. She's real pissed off at Daddy Thor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like how I don't know their names. They're just Mama Thor and Daddy Thor <laughs> and Dude Thor and Lady <laughs> Thor. <laughs> our one DC book this week, and it is our final review of the week. That's going to be Detective Comics Endgame number 1, written by Brian Bucciolato, art by Roge Antonia and Ronan Cliquette, and colors by Nick Filardi. My pass of the week. Really? Your pass of the week? This was the worst book we had. This, agreed. I don't know that I would pass on it because I feel that these characters are going to become something more. There was there were too many hints that they're going to be sticking around. If you've been reading Endgame, you know that Gotham is being ripped apart by the Joker through the Joker gas. The, these villains are killing... Or these citizens are killing themselves. And we know that they're trying to fight this whole city away so that Batman can get at Joker and and release the sedative or whatever it is that's going to fix all the people in Gotham, which we're going to find out this month with the final issue of Endgame. 
and obviously we have a brand new Batman in Batman number 41. So whatever happens in Endgame is going to in turn have those differences that we're going to see later. So it's going to be a very important issue. But in the meantime, we're getting all of the tie-in issues. What is what is going on during these, what is a one-hour, two-hour events? Right. And for this one, we actually don't follow any of the main Bat family characters. Instead, like you said, these are brand new characters that I think are going to play into We Are Robins? I believe so, because if you look at the characters, they all have some piece of Robin's costume on them. The girl especially, she's like 100% Robin costume, belt and shirt and green gloves. So it could be that, but I feel like you don't have to read this to read We Are Robins, because honestly, it's just a rescue story, and it wasn't even a good one at that. You don't even... He was rescuing his stripper mom. I, I, it's, it's... <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> She was making that money, money, money. She was. And Anarchy, I'm going to tell you because I don't think anyone should pick up this book or buy <laughs> it. Anarchy is not even in the issue. Well, yeah, I told you. What are we going to do with Anarchy again? Anything. Like, he, this could have been an opportunity where something with the Jokers could have popped up. Because we don't know when Batman stopped him. Mm, the truth. It could have been months ago before the Joker Endgame stuff happened. I guess. I don't know. I'm done with Anarchy for a while. All anarchy out. Yes. But I will say, I thought it was hilarious. So, the people of Gotham, the way the formula works is they chase after things that they like. Right? So, that's right. why people are going after Batman. Did you notice how many men were trying to break into that strip club? <laughs> Tons of them. <laughs> that was my favorite part. Because I'm like, y'all really like these strippers, man. <laughs> <laughs> The Joker guest has made them into bigger perverts. You know, good for them. <laughs> Let them do what they want. Let them live their lives. So our summary, our pick of the week for both of us was Silver Surfer number 10. Dan's pass of the week was Detective Comics Endgame number 1. And I don't think I had a pass of the week. Not I enjoyed it. Like, yes, Endgame was our worst, but I still think it's going to play into something. So, eh, whatever. <laughs> you think my decision's wrong. You should have seen the look he just gave me. It was... I, All right. I really didn't like that comic. Okay, I really woman. didn't like it. <laughs> it was not a good book. I'm it, sorry. I, it wasn't, but I wouldn't... I mean, I'm so glad I read it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's ten minutes of my life. I will never get back. For the money as well. More so because tie-ins are, are notorious for this shit. Where it's like, well, I'm going to read it because it's part of this story that I really enjoy or that I'm liking oh look at that it's 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 nothing happened in this and it has nothing to do with the main story it's just like a whatever issue like this issue could have not existed yeah. and it wouldn't have mattered okay so it's it's more of a personal thing as well with me with those tie-in stuff like death of the family did some creative stuff with some of the characters mm -hmm. and then with others it wasn't as good kind of like the red hood and the outlaws one right which they could have done way more with because it was someone that was killed by the joker and instead it's just him like blaming batman and saying that batman doesn't care about him or them and all that stop being nonsense. whiny right so we do want to remind all the brokettes out there that we do have a shop at nerdupmedia.com mm -hmm. slash shop you can for the nation of 16.99 that includes your shipping and the shirt materials everything you get to pick your color of t-shirt which comes in red blue gray and black each t-shirt has a corresponding logo that looks beautiful on it and you can choose from a variety of different sizes in both men's and women's if you're, watch if you're listening to this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Every one of those matters. It helps other people find those brand new broquettes out there. And of course, if you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, that would be very helpful as well. We love interacting with all of the listeners and viewers out there. And thank you for everyone who enjoyed my laugh last week. I enjoyed my laugh too. Not only your laugh, but your oath. Oh man, that was a good oath. Do I still have that paper? Oh, I do. My oath is right there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Better save that, just in case. Yeah, it's under the bed. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Twitter, at Reasons I'm Broke. Facebook.com slash The Reasons I'm Broke. Thank you all so much for listening. I'm Daniel. And I'm Kelly. We'll see you next week.